Hi, Javier Orozco introducing the topic of architectural efficiency and the nugget on the performance of facades for this efficiency through materials. Whenever we're building envelopes or facades, we should consider different points, types and history of the facades, the architectural parameters which should be implemented on our facade, which design criteria we are using and how to um, introduce solutions through assemblies for all this. Once we have all the constraints, we will be able to make a proper material selection. The first point is how uh, different facades are changing with time. Here we have two historical types of facades. The first one is the Parthenon on top and the second uh, on the bottom is the uh, 100 St. Mary Arch, one of the newest glass facades and uh, most modern buildings. Basically, the difference is how materials have been changing in order to implement all necessary uh, meeting of the constraints for the materials. Here you have also very important changes in facades and you see clearly how materials are affecting. What materials have private uh, men? only natural vegetal material. Those were the ones they were able to achieve, as you see here on the structure on the left. Below we have the medieval ages, castles like uh, Crack of the Knights and uh, one of the Cambridge colleges. At the same time in uh, Japan they did not have stone, so they went by using a wood with a very accurate uh, manufacturing, with great skill, but they did not have the stone. They didn't know how to manage that. Uh, later in the century, they knew about cement, how to work with it, and with gypsum. So you have different uh, facades for the holiday building and for more traditional facades. Later came concrete, brick, and nowadays there is a whole range of different materials from polymers as you see in the Allianz Arena in Munich or the Innovation Tower L for Zaha Hadid 2013 and metals in the Stelta Center for MIT. But even today, wood is important but used in a different way, like the building by Toyoito in 2011. In other words, we know materials are affecting our design and how the use of materials are affecting the facade. Let's understand the architectural parameters we are going to analyze. First one is how to incorporate features on the building that have visual interest. In other words, the aesthetic of the building. Second, create a compatibility between the buildings, the street, the neighborhood, in other words, urbanism. First constraint actually is the aesthetic. Second, urbanism. Third, provide views beyond the street wall to enhance the public visual environment. So, we are within a context and our facade is a, word, a way of integrating the whole context. It's a little bit more than urbanism and aesthetics, but the assembly of both in order to serve some architectural purpose. Fourth, the use of building elements can also provide uh, further uh, effects, uh, further services to men, like the enhancement of comfort, security, and so on. Here you have a complete list of uh, the architectural constraints and how they are uh, more or less important depending on the use of the building. You should read carefully through all these constraints and bear them in mind when you're selecting materials in order to understand the constraints and apply them. Uh, some examples, for example, the uh, vegetation in this facade is affecting uh, the overall look of the building. It can be more stressed, it can be more neutral, in other words, aesthetics. The second, the scale of the building is affecting the overall integration within the neighborhood. Third, how the integration of uh, different elements are changing the overall shape of the facade. Fourth, discourage blank walls whenever we want to stress something uh, which is very relevant for the building. The effect of elements which can be integrated either for safety, protection or other uses. 
and obviously the overall neighborhood effect. Well, all these examples are depicting how to use the different architectural constraint in a specific application. Fourth is a new set of constraints for our facade, the design criteria. In other words, all that we introduce through the passive uh, housing lesson or how to manage air within the building in order to compensate the effect of the rays of the sun or the effect of the environment, including cold air, movement of air and water obviously which is moving. Uh, the facade should allow the air to move in, move out when it's uh, right and also to move around for making the necessary blend and accommodate the internal temperature. Here you have clear example on the use of facades. The double face facade, as you can see, creates a thermal sheet of air moving in between the two layers for protecting against external heat. On the 100 St. Mary Arch you see how the movement of air around the building is also incorporated into the facade of the building for allowing a distribution of heat and compensation of temperature. Again, using light can be very interesting for different effects about uh, thermal uh, conductivity or thermal interior temperature by blending of air, the inclusion of humidity through transmitter reaction or the implementation of a vegetation, the filtering of the rays of the sun because of the different materials or filters which are incorporated into the glass. In other words, we should achieve an internal comfort zone as is depicted here in the psychrometric chart, including the effect of the sun according to where we are in the world and also the changes for different seasons of the year. Here you can understand how low lighting can uh, allow light and temperature to go in depending on uh, how we are putting the apertures into our facade, the windows in other words. And this is uh, clearly an example of passive housing but through the facade. Other application of possibilities for uh, the design of building a visual function self-cleaning of the facade, which has nothing to do with the previous. Some uh, materials are uh, photo effective like uh, uh, titanium dioxide, they are photoactive and using the rays of the sun can uh, break the bond between CO2 and clean the facade. Uh, apart from that we can filter the air, uh, we can eliminate noise using different forms on the materials for the facade. So all these effects are additional constraints that whenever possible we should be dealing with them for material selection. Uh, another effect on very high buildings is how we can control structural loads specifically under uh, earthquakes. Uh, the design of the structure for the facade is helping to absorb this vibration and avoid concentration of stresses at the nodes and therefore the collapse of the building which is very relevant. And that's all for this small part of the lesson. Thank you very much.